that when Negroes stop getting drunk, when Negroes stop fornicating and committing adultery, when Negroes stop being addicted to drugs and these things that destroy the moral fiber and the morale of the Negro, then our people will be able to get together and unite in harmony and unity and get our own problem solved. Shabbat Shalom family, it's your boy Solemn Prophet here with Professor S and this is Shabbat Talk. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom everybody. Uh, and we have our, our usuals here, a new usual too, two for two, Sister Chanel with us again, good to have you here. You know, we got Jasmine, Tess and Cindy. Uh, they they in here every time with us. So, uh, yeah, full disclosure today, we're going to talk about a topic that actually me and Sister Chanel had a conversation about yesterday. And um, we had another conversation today, a short conversation today. And we were trying to figure out what to do because we were going to go back to Galatians and uh, cover chapter four. But um, honestly, I didn't want to jump back into Galatians without like taking a, a day or two to like dive into the notes and stuff like that to cover everything. So um, we were trying to me and Joe, me and Professor S was talking like, what what topic should we come up with to, to discuss today? And so I thought back to our our conversation and I was like, that would be an interesting topic. So then I, I hit him up and was like, hey, what about these two topics? And it was. uh this topic that we cover in a day and another topic. And he said, yeah, that's good. So I said, all right, bet. So we are going to discuss is sex marriage or is it not marriage today? We're going to tackle that. Um, the reason why it came up, because it's, it's a highly debated topic um, in the Hebrew Israelite community. And so a lot of people want to know. And you got one opinion over here, another opinion over there. But it's always good to have different perspectives, have open dialogue, and then to ground everything in scripture. And so mm -hmm. that's what that's what we're we're setting out to do tonight. Um, if you're watching this and you are for sex is marriage or against sex is marriage, whatever your whatever your 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 stance, um, we just ask that you be respectful to other people, <clears throat> other people. And um, if you do, you know, want to, you know, join in in the comment section or whatever the case may be, you know, just be respectful and, and, and ground everything in scripture. Because if if you can't find a scripture for it or you can't um, find it in the scripture and it may not say a verbatim in scripture, but if the context isn't understood, then it's probably something that you're making up in your head. Okay, and uh, we don't want to be making up any any doctrines. So, with that being said, I'm curious because we haven't had this conversation um, as a group before on here on Shabbat Talk. So, I'm curious to see where everybody stands. Um, is uh, sex marriage or is sex separate from marriage, from your understanding? No. No, um, in my opinion... Oh if you sleep with a person, basically you're married, like okay. scripturally. And uh, in my stance, I can't remember the verse right now, but uh -huh. that's where I stand. Okay. If you love a person, you sleep with that person in y'all's eyes, you are married. Okay. In my opinion, um, it is marriage. Um, I, I, in the sense, like she was saying, like, um, I guess if you make a commitment, Mm -hmm. You're together and all that. And in my opinion, it is. Okay. Okay. What about you, Jazz? Um, I have a different stance. I believe that I believe that sex is it, it's just when you're married is sex, you know, when you're I don't know. I just have a different stance on it. I don't I don't agree that just because you sleep with them and I know it's in scripture that, that you're supposed to be married, but it means you're married to everybody up with in life and everybody just sleeps with anybody but i believe in sex and marriage like if you're married and have sex because uh -huh. it also talks about it's important. having sex in your covenant so that's okay. my stand so having now you're, there's you're saying having sex within the covenant of marriage is what you're saying 
Right. Got you. Okay, but sex itself for for from from your perspective is sex sex itself um the equivalent of marriage or conducive to marriage. No. I don't think so. Sex okay. is sex about marriage. Yep. Okay, okay. And um Sister Chanel, based on our conversation, do you want to kind of elaborate or do you want me to um, paraphrase um, I'm based still, on? I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm still on the fence about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's what I was going to say. You were still, the, the jewelry was still out for you based on uh, the conversations that we had. Right. Yeah. Okay. Professor. Well, here's S. the thing there's, there is, there is actually. Yeah. There are places in script. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think I'm leaning a little more toward that it's not marriage, but I'm still, you know, I still, I'm still undecided. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, to be fair to, um, um, you know, it, um, there are several places in scripture where, where it would seem that way. And you're like, okay, well, um, yeah, it looks like it is, right? So yeah. and we'll 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 dive into those scriptures as well. So. Gotcha. Professor S got a whole bunch locked and loaded, ready to <laughs> <laughs> No, not a whole bunch, but I got I got I got a few. You got a decent amount. I didn't I didn't go too deep because I figured the ones that I was gonna pull, you were gonna already pull. And then we were going to cancel well, we each all, other we, out. When we talked about it, <laughs> <laughs> the same thing. Man. Yeah, so that's why I this I left it. I left it with the one I mentioned on the phone with you. Mm -hmm. And then I think I pulled one other one, but I was like, I'm not going to go too deep in it because he's going to have it. And we're going to be like the saying the same thing. So I was like, nope, I'm going to let, I'll let my brother do his thing, you know, but um, yeah, professor S just for the people's sake, I know we had a conversation prior to this, but for the people's sake, what, what do you stand on the, on the, on the subject is sex marriage. Um, no, I would uh, say no, and there's a couple reasons for that. And I understand the arguments that it is. Um, I get those. Um, I think we'll uh, unpack that a little bit more. I do not believe it is because marriage is a covenant that you make. Um, sex is just the token of that covenant, right? Mm -hmm. So, Sister Chanel, don't he sound similar to me? <laughs> I was a uh... When I when I talked to when I talked to uh you earlier, um I told I told you about the conversation that I that I had with her, but we literally said the exact same thing verbatim almost. So I think that's funny. I told you he's like he's like my 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 Caucasian uh brother in the spirit. Like we we were <laughs> twins, like Jacob and Esau in in the in the in the womb of the spiritual <laughs> womb, and then we were born together like. We got different mamas, but I'm telling you, we be linked because <laughs> he said the same thing I said. So, yeah, you know how we do it on Shabbat Talk. Uh, we give you what we come from in terms of our understanding. And on this particular topic, although random, me and Professor S agree that sex is not marriage. Um, so we'll explain ourselves. I think this is a really good dialogue to have because we have a mix a mixed amount of understandings here. So we have some, we have a few that says yes, some that say no. We got one that's just, you know, I don't know. We're on the fence, so we don't won't figure it out. But we'll 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 jump into there. We're gonna get into some scriptures, give some explanations. I would like the dialogue on this particular topic to be more. I don't want to just be reading or I'm talking or Professor S is talking. I want to see where you guys kind of what your understanding is and kind of chime in, ask some questions or chime in and give some comment commentary as we go through maybe some of these scriptures. I know, like you said, there are scriptures that you read it and it sounds like that, right? Well, it says, oh, he went in onto her and she became his wife, right? When you're like, oh yeah, going in onto somebody is to have sex. And if she became his wife because he went into her, you put the two together in 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 from that quick understanding, you're like, all right, I, I can see why sex could be marriage, right? And there's various and you've aspects. Also got, you've also got um one Corinthians, which we'll go through, um, where it, it talks about the two becoming one, right? And um now here's the thing. Um, when you do have sex with somebody, you do become one with that person, right? Mm -hmm. 
but it's not in the sense of a covenant, right? Um, and Paul goes into that, so we'll 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 explore that as well. Because when <clears throat> when you see that, and and it's the same terminology that when a man cleaves to his wife, they become one flesh, right? Yeah. So it's the same terminology, um, but it's being spoken of in a different uh, a different setting, right? Yep. The, and uh, actually, the video, the clip, the video clip that I was going to play from this this brother, he he hits on that point, that exact that exact same point, but he only touches on it, and then he kind of moves on to the next point. So, uh, you want to start off, or does anybody got any scripture or any type of point that they would like to start us off with? Maybe because we can do it opposite from where we normally do it. We can start off with a question and let those questions kind of guide our dialogue you know what i'm saying i'd like to say one thing um yeah to me um sex is not something you do unless you're i don't know a couple or you're with somebody Mm -hmm. so my point of view might be a little different than actuality because um because like i said my point of view it's like you know i don't think you just it's not something to just go out and do yeah, so not, you've got to be not. committed first. And exactly. Like, so that's how I form my opinion on what I said. And that's yeah. honestly where I kind of form mine. Um, a lot of people have crazy ideas about me because my two children have two different men. That's not the case. I, uh, I simply, I, I don't believe in that unless you're completely committed and you do plan intend on spending the rest of rest of your life with that person mm-hmm. it's just a, it's sex isn't something to just have or have fun no how is it even enjoyable if you don't love the person just saying so <laughs> gotcha. okay okay well um i'm sure you you got you got uh some of the ones you want to pull out pulled up we could um, go yeah. we could start off with genesis right I mean, it should be. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna start. Um, you, you were gonna pull out. I know which one you're gonna pull out. So I'll start with the one before that, right? Um, so in Genesis uh, uh, 34 um, verses three through five, um, let me pull that up here. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so right here we've got uh, Genesis 34. Now, this is the story of um, uh, when Dinah was uh, taken by. Um, Let's pull up the parallel here. When Dinah, uh, Jacob's daughter, was taken by um, Shechem, and uh, he he uh, had sex with her and uh, took her to his house and wanted. Um, yeah, well, well, we'll just read it and let it see what it says. So, uh, and Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom <clears throat> she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And Shechem, son of Hamor, the Hivite, the prince of the land, saw her and took her and lay with her and humbled her. Um, And his being clung to Dinah and uh, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the girl and spoke kindly to her, to the girl. And Shechem spoke to his father Hamor, saying, take this girl for me for a wife. So he's already laid with her, right? And now he's saying... Get, get this girl to be my wife, right? Uh, and Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with him or with his livestock in the field. So Jacob kept silent until they came home. So right here, we see that he had already laid with her and humbled her, right? Um, but then he wants to take her as his wife. And coming down here to the end of the Y'all chapter, coming down here to the end of the chapter, um, we've got this whole thing where during the story, this fiasco, um, uh, basically Simeon and Levi kill everyone in the city, um, 
And then uh, Jacob's like, well, why would you do that? Now, now everyone's going to think I'm terrible and all this stuff. And they said, but they said, should he treat our sister like a whore? Should she be treated like a harlot, right? Um, so they felt like they were justified in slaughtering the entire city because of that. Um, but so there's a big distinction here with a whore or a harlot, King James, right? Um, and a wife, right? Because in their eyes, in their eyes, when he took her and laid with her, he was treating her like a harlot because he hadn't married her yet. Now, he later wanted to marry her. And he says, uh, he tells his father, take this girl for me for a wife, right? Because he wanted to marry her. So there's, uh, there's one. Well, no, no. well, it's just a point to make out. If the act of having sex specifically constituted marriage, he wouldn't have to ask or, or express any interest in marrying her in verse 4 because the act of having sex in verse 2, right, would have constituted that already. And so verse 4 wouldn't have said, hey, take this girl for me. For a wife, it would have said something in reference to her already being his wife. That's the only point I was going to make on this part right here. But great, great, great point right there. Great point right there. Here's the thing. It is supposed to be restricted to in the confines of a marriage, right? It's not, you know, you're not just supposed to be out fornicating, right? And I think a lot of people have that uh, idea as well. You know, to some people going around and fornicating like crazy is um, uh, completely alien. They would never do that. They're like, oh, no, I would never lay with someone I don't love, you know, that I'm not in love with. Right. Um, but to other people, it's not that way. And yeah. then we get this doctrine that, oh, well, if you if you've uh, laid with someone, then then you're married, you know. Yeah. So. Well, also, and to your point about laying with them, lay, laying only laying with people you love. Let's be real. Um human beings are emotional creatures. And so a lot of times we lead with our emotion, um, especially, no offense, but especially our sisters. Um, women are typically more emotionally led, emotionally driven than men. But I can, tell you, I can tell you from being a man myself that I've made some, some questionable decisions in my life based on my feelings and emotions. So it's not like we're excluded from that. But if you, but if you I, can I, yeah. go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was gonna say because if you say that when you lay with someone that you're technically married to them, in a man's point of view, and I just have brothers to come from that point in a lot of boy cousins, the guy doesn't always have feelings for the woman, so he's not married to her in his mind. It's only her mind. That could you be it. Yeah. <laughs> that could be it. But here's the thing, though, um, when you're going about it from the from a biblical perspective, right, especially if you have two people who adhere to the scriptures. If they both are. Or even one, because I, I kind of made this um, example yesterday on the phone, if you have somebody who's slightly more naive and ignorant of the scriptures and one that is more well versed in the scriptures but they follow this doctrine that sex it constitutes marriage well the say it was a man right the man knowing the scriptures could seduce the woman in various ways maybe he tells her that he loves her that he wants to marry her or whatever or maybe he's on some more malicious stuff like want to get her drunk or get her drugged up or whatever the case may be and then he sleeps with her. Then he tells her afterwards, well, see, according to the scriptures, you're now my wife. Now, if 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 her desire is to follow the scriptures and adhere to the scriptures, she has pressure to now feel obligated to to be this man's wife and to make him her husband. Because of her lack of understanding of the scriptures and vice versa, a man could be naive of the scriptures and he might, you know, just fall into temptation and, you know, he might be sexually attracted to the woman. They might just be hanging out and one thing leads to another. They sleep together. Right. But then she tells him, well, you know, according to the scriptures, you technically my husband now. 
like you said, Jasmine, he might not have no intentions of being a husband at that moment. He might be young or he might not be ready or whatever the case may be. Right. But we human, we imperfect, we make mistakes. But then he might feel obligated to be a husband to that woman and to take care of her and provide for her when he technically, even though he sinned, but it doesn't mean that he should now necessarily uh, he's he's now he's now the husband. He's now the head. So I've seen it um, both ways. Did you, did you say something in the background, brother? And I can understand it in both ways. Sorry, I didn't catch you off, y'all. I can understand it both ways, too, but I'm just saying, women and men, you are, like you said, very close to the picture. So if both parties are not in the same mindset or the mm -hmm. one is a something person, but the other one is actually. Okay. Um, we we going one and one, Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, yeah, I'll pull yeah, up one. With yours. Go ahead, I, I pull up one. Can everybody see this? Uh, yeah, I can now. Okay, so this is uh Deuteronomy 22, I believe. Yep, 22. I had that one too. <laughs> you had this one too? <laughs> I did. Okay, um, yeah. what part of Deuteronomy 22 did you have? Because it's two examples in this one chapter, and I'll do the, the opposite of whatever one you got. Um, I had the last one. If the man was, uh, if he was, if he laid with a virgin, then. Uh... <laughs> okay, that was the one I was going to do. Okay, I'll do the other one. I'll do the other one. I'll do the other one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell you, boy, you like my, you like my brother. Man, we just think the same. Read my mind, man. Stop reading my mind. Get out of my head. <laughs> All right, so I'll do the first one. I'll do the first one. Um, um, do, 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 do. Uh, where is it at? Okay, right here. So this is like the beginning portions of the tokens of virginity. Token of virginity, right? So this says, verse 13, it says, If any man take a wife, okay, and go in unto her and hate her and give occasion of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity, which is basically the marital bed sheets, okay, to the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Because it's the, the marital bed sheets, you have to prove that the girl was a virgin. Because if she was, then there should be blood on the, on the, on it. And the elders of that city shall take the man and chastise him, so they're going to rebuke him openly in front of everybody. And they shall immerse him. Um, and they shall immerse him in a hundred she shekels of silver, and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. And he may not put her away all his days. But if it's true, then they basically take the the, the daughter, the damsel, the, 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 the woman, and they take her to the front of her father's house and they stone her to death, right? And that's the, the law of the, the token of virginity. But the answer to the topic of today is in verse 13 and in verse... Uh, Sixteen. So understand the way the scriptures are worded. They separate what needs to be separated and they put together what needs to be put together. You're going to get separate ideas. Verse 13, it says, if any man take a wife, comma. He takes a wife. So she's his wife at this point. And. Go in unto her. So go in unto her is have sex with it. 
the act of sex here is separate from taking a wife. She's already his wife here. And then, uh, and like, like we said earlier, there's instances in scripture where it's flipped, where you see he goes, it says he goes into her and, and, um, and then she becomes his wife, but they're never the same. They're always separate, right? Whenever you see an and, whenever you see any other, um, like signals or separators in the sentence, it lets you know, because this right here has three separate ones. If a man take a wife, so she's his wife already, and have sex with her, and hate her. Because by saying that sex is marriage, it's, and putting these two together, does that mean that sex is hate or marriage is hate? No, there's three, there's three separate individual thoughts. And to confirm that, let's go to 16. It says, and the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife now. And he hated her. So he's saying he gave him, he gave the man his daughter to what to become his wife. Well, that lines up with the first part. The man took her to wife. If you understand the Hebraic process of marriage, if you as a man see a woman whom you who you like, who you who you attracted to, who you want to, to take as a wife, you have to go to her father first. You go to her father, you speak your intent. Hey, I like your daughter. I would love to court her. I would love her hand in marriage. The daughter, the, the father's gonna be looking you up and down, like, oh, let me see what kind of man you is. And then if y'all come to an agreement, you pay the father a bride price. And then you take you take the woman, you guys go through a courtship process. You have a you have a, a wedding and you consummate, right? And the consummation is like brother, brother, brother Professor S said, a token. It's a representation of the 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 marriage itself because the marriage is a covenant. So the process is man finds a wife, and in the process of finding a wife is going through all the things I just said. Go to the father, find the agreement, pay the bride price. Go through the courtship, get married, right? All of that is finding a wife. That happens. So if he takes a wife, that that's right there. He gave him to wife right there. Boom, boom, boom. And then sex is separate. Sex is separate. But it's a it's a more you're gonna see an even more clearer, detailed version at the end of this chapter. And, and Professor S is gonna pull it up, pull it out for y'all. So uh, twenty eight and twenty nine. Uh, if a man, so this is talking about um, basically if uh, dudes are going and ha having sex with women, right? And it first talks about, you know, if she's betrothed to someone else and he goes and lays with her, then um, he gets put to death, right? Um, but uh, because that's adultery, right? But um, in 28, it says, if a man find a, a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Because he hath humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. Right? So, if he goes and has sex with her, then he's required to go and pay the bride price to her father. And uh, then he's, he's also never allowed to divorce her or put her out of the house. Yeah. Um, because he did it before and. Um, not yeah. after. Mm -hmm. Not after. Something interesting to note here, right? After. You know, if he finds her, if she's not betrothed, they have sex, right? And they be found, right? So now that it's known, somebody caught them, right? It's it's out there in the streets. Then basically the man is forced to go through the marital process. It's like, okay, you didn't want to wait until marriage to, to do this. Now you're forced to go through this process. And guess what? You can never put her away. Even mm -hmm. if she was a harlot, even if she turned out to be wicked, even if she was just the bane of his existence for the remainder of their marriage, he can never get get rid of it because he decided to do it. And, in, in, you know, the most high operates in decency and order. 
And when you don't operate in decency and order, you get chaos. He wanted to act chaotic. Now you have to, he's forced to go through the whole process. There's a reason why they forced him to pay, right? He will give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver because to give silver to the father was the bride price. That's a part of the standard marital process in the Hebrew culture. So he's now forced to do that. And then it says, because all of this happened, because he humbled her. If you go back to the scripture that Professor S read the first time, it says that the the um the daughter the daughter uh was humble, mm -hmm. right? Even though the man loved the woman, he loved her and he wanted her to be his wife, he didn't operate in decency and order. He humbled her, and the act of humbling someone, especially for a woman, is detrimental to her livelihood. You understand? A woman always has to have a covering, and when you jeopardize her covering. You jeopardize her livelihood. They don't play about that. <laughs> they don't play about that. That's why this, that's this, why her brothers got so upset. This this is one of those controversial. Um, yeah, that's 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 why her brothers got so upset and went and killed him, right? Um, but uh, this is one of those controversial uh, scriptures where many people think, "Oh, it's so horrible! You re required to marry a guy who rapes you, right?" And, but no, in fact, when you look at the culture. And when you go back to how the culture was, um, this was actually for the benefit of the woman. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, hey, sis. What? Chanel, sis. Yes, sir. <laughs> did, I, did I not say that exact same thing on the phone? Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Joe, was yes, you on our did. conversation? No, did you, I wasn't it in? Did you I bug wasn't. my phone? No. I, Are you an I, FBI informant? I didn't. I didn't even know y'all had talked about this until you said something today. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. But that's how you know. Um, you know, truth is truth. No matter like how you slice it, cut it, shape it up, flipping around, um, whatever perspective you're coming from, truth is truth. You always get to the to the to the bottom of it. Because I I compared it to marriage and divorce. Mm -hmm. Brother, that's yeah. well. Not not only is that whole scenario, um, if that was to happen for the benefit of the woman, but also, um, it's going to be a major deterrent for guys to just go and do that, right? Yeah. Because, um, unless you know for sure that this woman's going to be good, you don't want you don't you don't want to because in a normal marriage, you get married and things aren't going right, you can give her a bill of divorce. But with one like this, you're stuck with her forever. And, and, and just if she turned out to be wicked or nagging or just hated you, just utterly hated you, you're stuck with her, right? So it's also a major deterrent for a guy to not do this. Yep. But it, and, and then it puts it back into order and puts her in a better position for the rest of her life. She's set for life at that point. So I... Sis, I'm not even going I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to just ask a question to 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 my brother, right? If if she's humble in that way and not if this law wasn't in place to make her a wife, what is her chances of um having a, another husband or having some type of covering or provision? Pretty pretty much zero. Pretty much zero. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> you know, when you read it from a westernized perspective like we have here in America, this this law looks very very barbaric, right? She was she was raped. She was a victim. Why is she being forced to have to marry this individual? He did all of these things, and I, because I, no one else is because at that point, no one, everyone everyone's gonna because it's been found out, so everyone knows it's all out yeah. on the street, right? Yeah, and um, no one's gonna want to marry her. They're gonna be like, she's not a virgin. I'm not marrying her, right? But in in this situation. Now she's got, uh, and and so he's forced. He's he's required to provide for her because being a husband is more than just having sex, right? And that's mm -hmm. you, you. You've got to provide for your for your yeah. wife. You have to give her food and her raiment, her mm -hmm. shelter, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 it, it entails a lot of responsibilities that um, many many people in our in, in our culture may take for granted. You know. 
Yep. Including conjugal rights. Mm-hmm. Including that, yeah. right? Yeah. That's that's in addition to. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. That's just I just found it funny, brother, that you say it <laughs> verbatim, literally like the same thing that I said. <laughs> I just, uh, it's, it's funny. But yeah, go ahead and pull out. Oh, wait, pause. Anybody got any comments so far? Any thoughts? Any disagreements? Any anything? I was um, thinking about like that in particular, like if the girl was raped. So I, I was looking at it from my own personal aspect. So okay, I want to see exactly what it says scripturally. Got you. Well, see, now, well, I can't now, handle you, space. I'm sorry. The way no. you broke it down, what you broke it down as far as the scripture was, like, you know, as far as the scripture was, like, you know, as far as the scripture was, like, you know, as far as the scripture was, like, you know, as far as the scripture was, like, you know, as far as the scripture was, like, you know, Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, just, those particular scriptures is what I needed to just confirm what I've always thought, but I didn't expect it. Okay. If I heard you correctly, I'm going to just re- repeat because it was a little hard to hear you. What you said was um, once we broke it down in the scripture to help you understand, you found out that it was already kind of in alignment with what you already thought. Is that what you said? Exactly what I said. Sorry, I'm driving. So yeah, I'm no worries. That. No, I just wanted to make sure I understood what you what you said. Yeah. Um. So, did you have a? Uh, did you want to go through? The, did you want to go through the Genesis uh, thirty eight? Uh, yeah, we can do that. But did you Pretty have a separate one? Because it's your turn. Well, I mean, technically, it would be yours because I I had the second part of it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to go to Genesis 38. <laughs> We're going to go to Genesis 38 real quick. Right, move this out the way. Yeah. This, this, this was actually the first one to come to my mind when, uh, when the subject was brought up. Okay, so not to make this super long, because this whole chapter is the example, but I don't want to have to read 30 s- s- verses. So I'm a, I'm a paraphrase, y'all. Go and read Genesis. Wait, oh, 38 right here. Yeah. Go and read Genesis chapter 38 for yourself. You, you get in, a chance. You're in uh, Deuteronomy 22 still, I think. No, I switched it. Oh, it's just did? that both of them happen to have 30 verses. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So, so the first couple verses is basically talking about Judah, right? Judah and Tamar. E, and Tamar. Okay. Tamar was married to his son. His son died. His son had a brother. And it is in the law, and it is a part of the custom that if your brother dies before having a child, that you go into his his wife, right? And you and you raise up seed for your brother. Well. This was supposed to happen. Judah told his uh, other son to do that with Tamar. But instead of doing that, he he acted wickedly. He slept with her, but then he pulled out, basically. He spilled his seed on the ground. Most high wasn't planned. Killed him instantly. Bah, done. Okay. So Tamar was already a widow. And instead of, you know, the, the act of raising up seed for your brother, taking her um, and then providing for her and caring for her, right? That didn't happen. So now Tamar was basically forced to return to her father's house. Okay. And grieve. That's 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 where we're at, right? So then um let me see. Uh and then and uh Jake, uh not Jacob, Judah. Judah told Tamar, look, hey, when my youngest son grows up. And becomes of age, I'm going I'm to put y'all together and you'll have a husband that way. But just chill over there for now. And I don't, the scripture, the scripture wasn't specific as to why this didn't happen. 
but Tamar felt slighted because he he was she was promised um she was promised a husband and didn't get it. So <laughs> she took matters into her own hands, all right? So she found out that Judah was supposed to be traveling to a specific location. She met him halfway and she changed her clothes and she disguised herself and wrapped herself up so that she looked like, a, honestly, she looked like a prostitute. He didn't know. But, and let me see, that's where I'll go into the reading the scripture. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, verse 16, it says, and he turned unto her by the way and said, go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. Let me have sex with you. That's what Judah told Tamar. But he didn't know it was Tamar. He did not know that it was his, his daughter-in-law. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, what will thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? So what you going to give me to have, you know, to have sex with me? Now, going back, because he thought she was a prostitute. Going back, and I said this on the conversation uh, yesterday. He, he didn't have money, but he could have went and got money and brought it back. But what he said was, he says, I will send thee a kid. A kid is a is a is a baby animal. Why would he want to why would he want to provide a baby animal in this instance instead of some money? Because a baby animal is sustenance. A baby animal can, can give you milk, can give you food, can give you longevity. You can you can work it and they, you know you can put stuff on it to carry. It's more of a provisional type of thing, right? Because a lot of prostitutes, not all, but a lot of them during those times were women who were put away without covering and they were having to, to to literally do those types of things just to survive so he could have given her some money but she would end up spending the money but if he gave her an animal that grow that was growing up that could have been you know more of a a long longer lasting uh kind of asset to have right that's like give it like you can give somebody a fish and they can eat for that day or you can teach them how to fish and now they can go out and get food for themselves kind of similar to that 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 asset so it says um i would give thee a kid from the flock and she said well thou give me a pledge till thou send it and he said what pledge shall i give thee so basically collateral okay he said i'm gonna give you an animal she said okay what, what you gonna put up for collateral and he said what do you want for collateral and she said thy signet which is his ring his signet ring and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it to her and he went in on her. So he had sex with her and she conceived by him. And she arose and went away and lay by her veil from her and put on her garments of her widowhood. So she went back to where she was at, put on her widow garments and continued to live her life. He went back to where he was at. And then uh, it says, and Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend. And he went there, but he couldn't find her. And then he said, he came back to Judah and told him, basically, yo, I went back to the place you told me. I didn't see no harlot. There was no harlot there. I even asked the people there, and they said they didn't have a harlot in that area, in that place. So Judah said, um, uh, let her take it to her, lest we be ashamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her. So he was like, ah, oh, man. Okay. Well, so well. Ba basically what she took, his signet ring, his yeah. uh his staff and his bracelets. I mean that's that's basically like the equivalent of of if I didn't have any money and I was going to a prostitute and they says I says, Well, I get paid tomorrow, I'll bring you bring you the money tomorrow. Like, well, what you gonna give me? That that would be like me giving them um my driver's license. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so because because everyone had their own staff, they had things on their staff that everyone would recognize. Yeah, you know. The signet ring, you know, that's that's how you, you know. So it, it basically, like, in today's terms, it'd be like me giving her my driver's license and a fingerprint. Yeah, it was it was important. I, it's important to identify, and it, how, it held value to the individual, right? So he was he was bummed out because he he needed to get his stuff back. You know, he <laughs> wasn't necessarily extremely worried about the about the woman. About the given given the animal, he was worried about getting his his collateral back. All right, and so that just goes to show you, men think with they with the head that's below the belt line, and not the head on their shoulders. Because if 
this man put up all kind of important stuff just just the smash really basically so all right now going back um okay so and it came to pass about three months after so we in the future now that it was told to judah saying tamar thy daughter-in-law hath played the harlot and also behold she is with child by whoredom and judah said bring her forth and let her be burnt so three months later they come in at him like oh your daughter-in-law yo she pregnant she was out there you know smashing da 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 he like what he's like he's like burn her bring her here so we can burn her she got to burn right but that's another thing remember in, in in uh deuteronomy where it says and they be found israel didn't play you if if people found out you did sin they put you on blast you saw they came to judah just to put his his daughter-in-law on blast like if they be found oh it they found all right right <laughs> so it says uh and when when she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law saying, by the man whose these are, am I with child? And she said, discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet and bracelets and staff? And Judah acknowledged them and said, she hath been more righteous than I, because I he's, because that I gave her not to Sheila, my son, and he knew her again no more. Now, so you heard the whole story, right? He, she 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 basically tricked him but even after tricking him and having sex with him he still told her that she was more righteous than him because he failed to do the duty of his promise he promised his son to her to, to be a husband and he didn't give it to her but going back to the context of the topic that we're talking about it says and he knew her again no more meaning he didn't go into her no more they had no no type of relation if sex equal marriage, as soon as he found out that that was his daughter-in-law, he would have just married her. That's not what we see here. So the act of having sex doesn't mean that you're automatically married. And this is just random. Like, this is just like random in, in general. But if that's if sex equals marriage, and there's a lot of different examples, but if sex equals marriage, then there would be no point of prostitution. Because once you sleep with a prostitute, then she'd be your wife. He knew that he was just he was just getting some cutty and he was just paying paying it back whenever he, you know, got back to to give him the animal. He went, he didn't say go find the my wife. He didn't send his buddy to go find his wife to bring him to bring her back to his house to live with him. No, he sent what he told her he was gonna send. He sent his buddy with the animal to get his stuff back. It was, that was no part of a that was no part of a wedding. There was no part of a marriage, a covenant, or nothing. It was just yo, hey, I, I, I paid. Go go get my payment. Go get my stuff back. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's 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 another example in the scripture. And go ahead and pull on, pull it on that up. Be, just don't pull up the Corinthians yet, because I think I no. want to play that video, and then you can go in and explain the the more in depth part of the Corinthians. No, no, yeah, no, 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 because I I know you said that, so yeah, we'll we'll go into Corinthians a little bit later. I still got a couple other examples here. Um, two Samuel eleven. Um, this is the story where David has sex with Bathsheba, and um, oh, that's a good one. Yep. So she's all she's already married, right? But he goes and has sex with her. When he finds out she's pregnant, she sends him a thing saying, you know, I got pregnant. Um, and then so he has this whole plot to kill her husband, right? So that so that he can hide his uh his sin, right? Because at that point he realized he, he he was like, Oh man, I I, I don't want to be embarrassed, right? Sleeping with with another man's wife. So yeah. Um he goes and divides this whole plot, has her husband murdered. And then we get down to uh, verse 27. Um, so, well, not quite 27. So when it comes back, uh, Joab um, comes back, tells him, hey, look, the uh, sword devoured, um, you know, the battle strong against the over through the city and encourage him. And um, and when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, 
David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare a son. So, um, she didn't become his wife until after her previous husband was dead, right? Yeah, because that um, covenant, that, that marital covenant ended. Yep, yep, because at that point, the covenant ended, and then he could legally take her as his wife, right? Because otherwise, he couldn't marry her, uh, even, you know, um, well, she became his wife after that. So she spent her time mourning, and once she was done mourning, then he had her brought up to the palace to, to be his wife. So, um, yeah, there's that, because if... Um, also, a woman can't be married to more than one man at once, right? Correct. Um, you know, I mean, if a woman gets divorced or if her husband dies and she's a widow, then she can go in and get remarried. But she, scripturally, a woman can only be married to one man at one time, right? Yeah. But if this was the case, then David would have also become her husband. She would have had two husbands at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there is sex, that. Sex is marriage. A woman sleeping with multiple men, she would have to be married to multiple people, but that's not a thing. Now there is there is a transfer of um, uh, genetic material and um, energies that goes on whenever you have sex, right? Yeah. So um, what's intended to be relegated uh, and exclusive to marriage does happen if you're doing it outside of marriage, but it doesn't make it marriage just because that happens. Yep, that makes sense. Absolutely. Cause, cause because sex is significant. It's sex is mm -hmm. multifaceted within itself and it's significant, which is why sex and marriage fit together like a puzzle piece, because they're meant to be together. But when you separate the two and you only do one, then that's when you know it gets a little a little mm -hmm. dicey, a little tricky. It's it's like to go back to uh what we was just going through in Galatians about the um the uh, circumcision, right? Circumcision was the token of the covenant, right? But if you're not in the covenant, it does you no good to just circumcise yourself. What good does that do? Yeah. To to just do the token of it and not actually have entered into the covenant, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's why they they they. Say... <laughs> it's funny because when you think about the the secular analogy, right? Why by the why by the cow when you can get the milk for free? Right. But the milk is the token that milk is supposed to be with it. You're supposed to have a cow and get milk from the cow. Mm -hmm. But why purchase the cow? Why make the commitment for marriage if you're gonna be having sex for free and without the commitment? But they supposed to be together originally. Sex and marriage are supposed to be one, supposed supposed to be like like uh Sister Jasmine said, sex is supposed to be within the confines of the marital covenant. Yeah. But having yeah. sex outside of the marital covenant doesn't constitute marriage. But there is instances in the scripture, like we covered some today, if you do do it outside the marital covenant in certain uh, certain circumstances, you're forced into a marital covenant because they're supposed to be they're supposed to go in there. But that that instance is mostly to protect the woman because if if you humble a woman, other men ain't gonna want her. At least that in, 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 in that culture anyways. Go ahead, say that out loud, sis. Y'all, y'all in the chat. When we get in the chat, speak it up. Say it. Don't on been here. It's conversation. Unmute that mic. Hi, it's Tess. Now I just wanted to say, um, well, as I said in the chat, I learned a valuable lesson here. It's not about my feelings, my thoughts, it's about what scripture actually says. But those were my own personal feelings, and I gotta get out of my feelings and get into what the actual word says well hey you know it's 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 ev ev everyone has feelings so it's nothing uh you know everyone has these feelings and you know maybe, maybe this is just not necessarily a, a topic that you felt led to uh study out because you know um and and, and unless you've studied it you wouldn't know you know what i'm saying so it's not like it's not like oh it's bad or anything but um, when when we, uh, when we when we want to know the truth on on a matter, we've got to get into the scripture. So. Yeah, it's tons of topics, tons of topics to study to to look into. You're not going to be able to hit everything. You're not going to be well versed on everything. You know that's why we we read and that's why we share what we know 
so that if it is something that somebody else didn't study, they can get the Cliff Notes version, fact check us, find out if it's true or not. And then if it is true, then they can, you know, absorb it, take it in and then move on to something else that they that they can look into instead of spending X amount of months or years looking into the same information that we already have. You know, and that's why we do it. You know, that's why that's how I learned a lot of things, because um, I was able to know people who were knowledgeable in the scriptures. Some of the things in the research that they conducted, they shared that with me. So they already did the hard work. They didn't study into this two, three, four, five years. Then they give it to me. I get the cliff note version. I look into it. I fact check it against other scriptures. Oh, this is cool. This is right. Right. All right. Boom. Now, what took them years took me a couple months. And now I can start on something that may take me a couple years that I can share with somebody else and keep paying it forward. You know what I'm saying? So it's not don't 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 get bad. Oh, getting get into a a funk of conviction because, you know, you thought one thing or whatever. You know, we all have you know, we all have thoughts and opinions and perspectives of what we think. And until we actually see what the scriptures state uh, state about it, you you wouldn't you really wouldn't know. You might think so, something. I thought that you know women and children were always innocent until I read the scriptures and found contrary to that. And it bothered me because my feelings I I I per I perceived women and children as the examples of innocence, right? So when I read it in the scripture, certain things happened, and I said, "Man, that don't sit right with me." But that was it a spirit of discernment that was that was making me feel unsettled that was me battling with my own flesh in that matter you know so it's all good it is all good um do you have another another scripture to pull up off the top of my cuz I like I said I only pulled out those two oh i got I didn't want to I didn't want to keep button heads with you on the same topics <laughs> because we we'll probably just pull up the same. But thing let's 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 let me pull up. Let me pull up. Uh, uh, Abraham. Let me pull up Abraham with Sarah. What? Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's look into some of that wording. Do you have that already? I did not have that one. No. Okay. No. Abraham. Let's see. No, I just had two more other than Corinthians. So. Okay. Okay, so that's Genesis 16. Uh, what? Uh, let me share my screen. Genesis 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar, or Hagar, however you want to say it. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Most High have restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. So she's barren. He, she was like, look, I'm barren, but go into my handmaid and I'll take children. I'll have children by her. It says, And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. Okay? That's the end of verse 3. So she gave Abram her handmaid and to be a wife. Then in verse 4, it says, and he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. So, again, we see scripture saying, look, I bet she was given to him as a wife. So it was already established and understood. And then after the fact, they 
consummated and she conceived and gave and had a and had a and had a kid, right? Mm -hmm. Marriage separate from sex. Marriage was first in this instance, and then sex was second. But it ain't even about the order, it's the fact that there's two separate entities. That's the that's the main point to take take home from this. Mm -hmm. Um, let's, uh, let's see, um, I'll just, I'll just read this real, real fast because it's just a, a small point. Um, in Judges 16, one, it said, then went Samson to Gaza and saw there a harlot and he went in under her. And it doesn't say that he got married to her. In fact, that's right before he met Delilah and fell in love with her. Yeah, we so, know Samson. <laughs> we know who, who who Samson was worried about. Yeah. So there was that, and then the other one, um, because see, basically, what Samson was doing, he was just fornicating. He wasn't. He wasn't actually getting married. Right? Yeah. Um. So now we'll go to uh, John uh, four uh, sixteen from eighteen. Um. And this is uh, probably uh, probably one that a lot of people know. Um, four. So um, in this story, he was at a well, and this um, Samaritan woman come up to him, started talking to him, and um, he he just he just blew her mind, right? He blew her mind. And um, in fifteen, it says, and the woman said to him, Master. Give me this water so that I do not thirst nor come here to draw. Because he says, you know, I'll give you living water, right? And uh, and he said to her, go, call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Messiah said to her, you said well, or you have, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands and the one... Whom you now have is not your husband, right? So he says, the, the guy you're living with now isn't even your husband. Mm. All right. She's shacking um, up. Yep, she just shacking because, you know, um, whatever the case was, maybe she was put away or whatever the case was. I don't know her backstory, right? Um, but uh, Messiah knew. And, um, so she had she had previously had five husbands, and uh, now the dude that she's with now is not her husband. But if she's with him, and the implication is they're having sex, right? Mm -hmm. The one the one whom you now have is not your husband. So, um, if if they were having sex and he's not her husband, then it's uh. It doesn't equal, right? That's so. That was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. I didn't even think about that one. That's a good one. You shacking up? You 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 hitting the cheeks? But hitting the cheeks don't make them your wife. So you shacking up? And he said you you said right when you said that you don't have a husband. But dang, five husbands. Cause you know what has to happen for you to get divorced during that time. So you had to go through that five times. People was either dying left and right, or you just wasn't finding favor, and they just kept giving you a bill of divorce. But she had paperwork. What? <laughs> yeah, some paperwork, boy. Okay. Um, that was the last one you had before the First Corinthian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let, we'll we'll go and watch this video, and then yeah, I'm interested to see this. Cool. So the name of this video is "If You Sleep with Someone, Are You Biblically Married?" Now, I'm not saying that I follow this brother. I do not I actually highly disagree with him on much but what he said in this video on this portion of uh, that i'm gonna play in this video um i would say that i agree with 
And that that is that dude, by the way. It is the same dude. I thought it so. Is. He looks so familiar to me, man. Nope, nope, that okay, is. Look, that's the same dude. Okay. But what he said in this video, and I like the way he put it, this particular thing. So we'll we'll go ahead and play this. Oh, wait. I didn't hit the audio button. Almost made a boo boo. All right, we good. Everybody can see that. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And here it is the first question. This question comes in from Nicole Modiotis, who says, "Okay, my question is this." How does the Bible define marriage? I've been with my partner for almost 12 years. I think we're married, but we haven't had a wedding. Is a wedding a man-made tradition or is it necessary? I've been wondering this for a while and have not come across any scripture that says it is. I keep referring to Genesis 2.24. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. This is actually a really, a really good question. Um, I think is valid for so many relationships and so many people. So I'm going to try and unpack it quickly, but hopefully very accurately and in a way that helps you guys. Uh, let me offer one thing first. I will say that a sexual relationship, even if it's outside of a marriage, it does create a union of some kind. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 6 verse 16 to look at this. In this passage, Paul the Apostle is giving them an awareness of how big of a deal it is for them to be joined to a prostitute or to sleep with a prostitute. But notice what he says about sleeping with a prostitute, who's obviously not your wife, he says, or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? And this seems to imply that the content in Genesis 2.24 about marriage, about the two becoming one, that it applies to any two people that sleep together. And I think there is a truth in that, but it's not the whole truth. This doesn't mean those people are married. It means that they have been joined, that they have connected themselves, but this is an ungodly connection and not a godly marriage. That's where I would draw the line. But let me build my case for the fact that um, sexual relations, they do create a union, but not a marriage. Not a marriage. It's actually a... a a bad union because it's outside of that that bond of marriage. First off, let me just mention that in the uh, in the scriptures, Old and New Testament, adultery does not equal polygamy, and that's what would happen if sex equaled marriage. Then adultery would be polygamy. So if a person, a man in particular, who who slept with some woman, not his not his wife, as long as she's single, boom, now he's married to her too. But the Bible definitely doesn't say that. It treats adultery like it's just adultery in every case. Um, so, so sex itself then doesn't make a marriage. Another reason would be that fornication wouldn't be a thing. Biblically speaking, you wouldn't have such a thing as, hey, sex outside or sex as a single person is wrong because it would just be marriage, right? Two teenagers decide to sleep together, boom, they're just married now. That wouldn't even be fornication. It would just be a, a young marriage. But that's not the case in scripture. Fornication is a big deal. It's a very big issue. It's only within a marriage that then sex is okay. So in a sense, sex in addition to marriage, that's what makes the godly union. And sex outside of marriage, that's what makes the bad union. So remember that concept. So I thought that basically what he said was pretty, pretty astute. I was surprised after watching that first previous video that I watched. <laughs> of his explanation trying to he's trying to explain away law of attraction um that was kind of funny but this video here i i with just that sentiment i didn't watch the whole video so i don't know what other points he makes or brings up but i i, I like the, the the point that he made about current first uh first corinthians and i like the point that he made about he said polygamy but you, we know polygyny right if sex was marriage, then it wouldn't be adultery for a man to go and sleep with another woman. It would be polygyny. But polygyny, we know for a fact from the scriptures that a man has the authority to take another wife. However, it's a process to doing that, right? We see two uh, various examples within the scriptures. We see examples of the wife providing another wife for the husband, like Sarai or Sarah, providing Hagar to Abram or Abraham. But we also see, you know, a man taking a separate wife, and then now he's he has two or more two or more wives. And then um, in real time, 
polygyny relationships, you see the process of how standard marriage is conducted, but it's just in addition to. So a man is married to one wife, but when he sees another woman whom, whom he wants to make a wife, he goes through that same marital process, right? Going to the father, blah, 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 right? Um, I would hope that he communicates this with his first wife and that they're on the same page, right? Because when you don't do that, you can cause a lot of issues, especially if the first wife was never polygynous, okay? So, but this, the process is still the same. So if sex equals marriage, then there shouldn't even be a process. He shouldn't have to go and find her, find her father, speak to him, get the approval, pay the bride price, do the courtship. He just go and have sex. Hey, all right, we slept together. You're not my wife. You my wife and you my wife and you my wife and you my wife. I got four wives because I had sex with four different people. Um, that's not the case in the scriptures. Um, I know this is a secular example. However, it, it makes sense because although it's a secular example, it's founded upon, upon biblical principles. Think back in the old days, like the 50s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, right? If a father found out that his daughter has sex, premarital sex with, an, with another another teenager or whatever, right? What they would do, they would bring them in, they would cuss them the hell out, right? But then after that, they're like, okay, how we how are we gonna how are we gonna save this situation? You guys got to get married. You got to get married. And yeah, then then they'd have they'd have the uh, <laughs> the the shotgun wedding. Shotgun right? wedding, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a secular mm -hmm. example, but it's founded upon biblical principles. Because if sex constituted marriage, they would have no need for that. Because the act of sex would have solidified the union. But it's, but sex itself is different from marriage because marriage, again, is a marital covenant that you make with two people and the most high. It's a it's a three, think of it as a three-corded braid or a rope with three strands twisted around. It's you have your husband, you have the wife, and you have the most high. That covenant is with all three. That's why the most high is supposed to lead the marriage. And guide them and everybody looking to the most high for guidance and by looking at the most high they're upholding one another throughout that covenant but sex i i, I actually i actually thought that the, the way he the way he broke that down was uh was was very good because um um there is definitely a component of what happens naturally in a marriage right mm -hmm. because you do become one flesh whenever you get married right because and you you lay together because there's an exchange of bodily fluids that contain genetic material and the woman uh, naturally will become more um she will take on the personalities and character traits of her husband as long as they're um as long as they're regularly you know doing the the conjugal rights you know what i'm saying um the duty of marriage right so um there is there is that that aspect that component to it right but um simply the 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 act of marriage is not entering into the covenant the covenant of marriage is you make a covenant um with your wife and with the most high right just like you said and um uh, it's it's a three-party covenant and um so you enter into that covenant in advance and then um the consummation of that is the sex is the sex yeah Absolutely. It, 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 it might might be a slightly different process for taking a concubine, but still it's still uh, more or less the same thing. Like um, because a concubine was essentially considered to be a wife. It wasn't like yeah. wasn't like, oh, that's just my my side piece or something. Right. It wasn't no. like that. No, I would you say know? I would say the process is the same. The only difference is the, the concubine, uh, her inheritance rights aren't guaranteed. She can receive an inheritance from her husband. However, he's not obligated to give it to her according to Torah. Right? If she if she receives inheritance rights from him, then that's just something that he decided to do. Now, if he and, wants and, to and and his wife or wives would have more authority over various situations they could than than the concubine would. Hmm. It's pretty much pretty much the only difference, really. But yeah. So Concubines are wives too, but he, a concubine can always get, be upgraded to a wife. 
So, so do you want to? Um, no, you can pull up. I, I think he. I think he did pretty much exactly. Said pretty much exactly what I was going to say about that. Um, but uh, we'll go to it and um, take a look. That's uh, one Corinthians. What was that one Corinthians six? I got written down here. Was it um, yeah, one Corinthians six. Oh, six. Yeah, six. I think it was fifteen. Yeah, fifteen through seventeen. Fifteen through seventeen. So one Corinthians six, fifteen through seventeen. Um, and uh, so, do you not know that your bodies are members of Messiah? Shall I then? Take the member of Messiah and make them members of a prostitute, a harlot, a whore. Uh, let it not be. You know, King James says, God forbid, right? Um, or do you not know that he who is joined to a, a harlot, a whore, is one body? For he says, the two shall become one flesh. Um, and he who is joined to the master is one spirit. Um, so... You do have that uh, that connection, right? Um, whenever whenever a, a, a man lays with lays, lays with his wife or another woman, for that matter, any any woman, um, there's an exchange of bodily fluids that uh, contain genetic material, and the, the the wife is she will begin to take on his character traits, his personality, and um, and this is something that happens unbeknownst to her. It's not like she consciously decides to do this. It's just because there's a connection with the uh, the, the genetics, you know. Um, now, and that's that's also why you know a man because it's supposed to be a one way road, right, from the man to the woman. Um, that's why it's so important and it talks so much about not laying with a woman when she's on her monthly flow because um, then it goes both ways, right? Um, and also with the, the homosexuality, right? It's It, it becomes a two-way street at that point and it's yeah. only supposed to be a one-way from, Go ahead, from under the your, to um, Under your, your share. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's just... Um, it becomes a two-way street at that point, and um, there's there's a lot really. Scripture doesn't put it in terminology that we're accustomed to with our, you know, what we learn in science, right? But there is lots of of the scientific uh, information in Scripture about the genetics and the importance of that, right? Because, um, and okay, so. To go a little bit onto the uh, side side note here, a little bit of a rabbit trail. Um, when when someone uh, someone's DNA, if you take someone's DNA to another place, right? You take it another place. There's actually a study that the I think it was the Navy or I, I don't know. I think it was the Navy conducted this study where they took this they took a DNA swab of this guy's mouth, and um, they took it to the other side of the base. And uh, they showed him a series of pictures to excite different emotional states in the guy. And every time the guy had an emotional reaction to the pictures, even though it's on the other side of the base, his DNA there changed, right? Based on his emotional reaction. Um, the They were like, hmm, I don't know what to make of that. And they just kind of scrapped the project. But uh, several years later, they did another... Um, similar study where this time they didn't go to the other side of the base they actually flew it like 300 miles away and they timed it with the uh atomic clock um and at the exact moment that the person had the emotional reaction his dna 300 miles away changed right um and so with a man you know putting his dna in a woman right um putting genetic material into the woman, even if they separate ways, they're still connected because every time that man thinks something or has a, a feeling, any kind of uh, emotion, it's going to affect her, maybe in subtle ways, right? It's, it's not, and it's not like it's going to be something that she's consciously aware of, but uh, it's going to affect her, right? And that's why it was so important in Israel to, that if if you if you laid with this virgin, then you got to take her to be your wife, right? 
because no other man wants to deal with the the emotional roller coaster that the previous dude is is on regardless of where he's at right because it's going to still affect his wife and um um it's just there's there's so much more profundity to to these scriptures and uh why the most high says the things that he says right and and he says everything because he loves us he cares about us and he wants us to have a good life right um mm -hmm. he wants he wants it to be well with us so um yeah a little bit of a rabbit trail there but okay let me pull up Two separate verses, but they're going to complement each other. Um, okay. Share my screen here. All right. So this was mentioned earlier, but I, I want to read this to go to the other scripture and then I'll, I'll give a little bit of a further explanation. So this is Genesis 2 and 24. It says, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. Well, let's, let's, let's dig more into that. Mark 10. Okay, Mark 10, verses 7. Well, no, let's go. I'll go back up to... Six. It says, but from the beginning of the creation, the Most High made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they, twain, or the two, shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain or two, but one flesh. And he says, what therefore the most high have joined together, let not man put asunder. And in other translations, it's like, let no man separate the two. Because they're always supposed to be together. They're always supposed to be one. From a genetic side, like Professor S explained, because this is genetic material, it's DNA and everything, it's, it's bodily fluids, it's all kind of things, right? Then you have, because it's you become one. So you become one mind, one body, one spirit, right? Well, the body that inv involves all of the genetic material, DNA, like that. One mind is you think alike, which can be a result of exchanging genetic and DNA information. But also, you notice like when you spend time with people, even if it's like your friend, when you're around people, you, you tend to pick up certain things about them, certain mannerisms, certain mindsets, certain thoughts. You guys, you, you find out like, oh man, I was thinking the same thing. You guys link, you connect, right? Mm -hmm. Those are vibrational frequencies that's shared because when your mind thinks something or when you do something, you're sending out that vibrational frequency. Your brain is a transmitter of it, but your brain is also a receptor of it. So as you're transmitting and they're transmitting, you guys are picking up each other's different things, right? Well, that also comes into play, obviously, within a marriage because you guys are together. You live together. Mm -hmm. So that's mind, body, and then the, let's talk about the spiritual aspect, right? And that's, I would say, it's probably the biggest, the biggest uh, reason for sex in, in, in the confines of a marriage. When you lay with somebody, you form a soul tie, and soul ties are very, very, very serious, okay? Mm -hmm. You are giving that individual, a piece of you, not yeah. from a, I ain't talking about the physical physical piece. I'm talking about a, a piece of you. So if you are dealing with all kind of demons, all kind of, of all kind of uh, spiritual attacks, you're, you're opening that individual whom you're sleeping with up to the same things you're stressing out with. That's why so many people, like if you look at the, the studies and the statistics of like mental health and stuff like that. There's examples of individuals who have not had any type of mental health issues their entire life. Miraculously start to 
exhibit symptoms of certain things. And the only factor that's ever changed within their, their routine or their norm was a new sexual partner. Now, all of a sudden, they're having these outbursts. They're having these fits and different things like that. Or they're in a, a, a state of depression. Or they're, they're experiencing all of these types of um, um, emotional fluctuations. Right. Or multiple personalities. Multiple personalities, you know, different things like um, that. Not to not not to get too far off of that uh, subject, but um, uh, it's actually very surprising. I've I've looked into a few years back when I did the study on the whole um, seed transfers and everything. Um, most uh, most prostitutes like. A very high percentage, and I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. I'm not going to make up a nothing, but um, a high percentage of prostitutes have multiple personality disorder. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Very, very high percentage. So, but I don't uh, know no prostitutes, so I can't. <laughs> well, I, can't I, I don't either, but I can't say I can confirm nor deny that. <laughs> I don't got no friends that just they just prostitute on the side like DoorDash or Uber Eats or something. They just prostitute on the side. To make <laughs> I, don't like I, don't, I don't know nobody like that. <laughs> not not on either, but yeah, but yeah, like when you when you engage in sex, you literally, literally, when a scripture says you become one, you become one, one mind, mm -hmm. one body, one spirit. Right. That's why, like. Even on a on a from an anatomy perspective, that's why the woman, her physical body is an insert, right? It's it's meant to be penetrated, and a man goes into because if you, it's like a puzzle piece, man. Let's let's be real, you know, we adults, it's like a puzzle piece. You become one on all aspects, and it's meant for you to become one on all aspects because you're meant to only become one with one. Within within the the confines of marriage, right? So, by having that that experience of sex out without the marital covenant, you you get all of the detrimental side effects of what should be shared with your partner, right? Like you ever have you ever noticed like some of these gurus of like um like relationships and and stuff like that, they'll tell someone, like, that's, like, sis, sis, you could, you could probably uh, attest to this, you probably heard this somewhere around, I, cause I seen a, a, um, a relationship guru give exam, give, ex, uh, give advice to other sisters, and she said, if you have been having premarital sex, you need to abstain from having sex for at least a year before dealing with anybody else. Now, I think that even with with abstaining, you won't be able to rid yourself of everything. But there's a reason why such a long period of time is recommended before, you know, engaging in that with someone to court and to potentially marry. Because you're, it, you're, it causes confusion in the mind. It causes. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, all kind of all kind of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. All kind of stuff. And just the other, I think it was like last week, we was having a conversation on the phone. It was me, my wife, and a couple other people. And they came out. Was it was it was it with you, Jasmine? I think it was with you. We was talking about and uh you saying like that that um that natural way to like dush and you see so, all the stuff that so, comes out yes. of it. I say that when you was talking about that. That so there is an actual way that you could like dush or whatever, and it's a natural way, it's basically using herbs and stuff like that. And personally, I recently tried it because it's supposed to help with like menstrual cramps and all that kind of stuff. But when I tell you it cleans you out, it, it really, really, it gets that stuff out of there. Yeah. And you have, you were saying like somebody else did it that told you about it. And yes, a friend of mine did it. Yep. And told me about it. I didn't believe it. I was skeptic. For a long time, I didn't believe it. But this girl literally uses all natural herbs. Like, And when you Google the herbs that's in it, it's, it's all natural. It's nothing in it that's additive. But when I tell you, Most High created a, a, a space for women that's really special and we have to take care of it, that detox is no joke. Yeah. And so the, the friend was explaining to her, like, all the stuff that literally came out of her. Now, mind you, this individual showers every day. 
probably has douched on occasion whenever she needed to and took care of herself hygiene wise. But when she did this natural detox and saw all of the stuff that came out of her as a result of all of the men, and I'm not saying she had sex with a whole bunch of people, but her past came out of her and it was not, it was not good. Like when she saw it, it like freaked her out, which doesn't make sense because, you know, you think about you have sex, you take a shower, probably the next day, you know, you do your thing, but no, because it was meant Sex was meant to, you know, and, and so with it being so sacred in that effect, that's why it's supposed to be done within the confines of marriage. And that's why it's so much scripture that talks about if you do it outside of marriage, why there's so many dis different various consequences to that and so many different implementations to protect to protect the and, women. And there is definitely a spiritual um, a spiritual aspect to it, um, a, a very huge spiritual component. Um, you know, the, um, when, when Paul was talking about that in Corinthians, um, it was actually in reference to like these pagan, um, temples and pagan cults and all this kind of stuff. I mean, probably wouldn't have considered it a cult back then. Cause it was really just like the, the common religion, the, you know, the, yeah, the, the believers area. in Messiah were kind of, were, were kind of like the. The, the, cult. the minority, right? Yeah, they would have. They, they would have been considered the cult. Because, <laughs> you know. But um, in the pagan customs, you always have a high priestess and uh, temple prostitutes. As a matter of fact, if you go back to, the, we, we we won't do that. But if you ever want to um, just look into it, the um, the story of Judah and Tamar. Uh, Judah actually thought she was a um, temple prostitute, right? Um, the temples is actually where you'd go to have 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 sex and all this uh, orgies and stuff. And what they actually did, the high priestess, she was the high priestess because um, she she had sex with all the men in the in the uh, organization. So she was actually drawing their energy out of them and making these connections, these bonds with them. And in in her view, uh, in the the pagan culture and the pagan belief system, she was gaining power by doing that, right? And um, all the temple prostitutes gained power by doing that. And um, there there's there's a spiritual component to that, uh, absolutely. And that's what that's what Paul's saying is you don't want to unite Messiah with a, a a prostitute, especially a pagan one that's going to try to use your energies to manipulate things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Absolutely. Sex has a lot of side effects. <laughs> Sex and, it, make... and it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to, and it shouldn't, but, you know. Yeah. But, if it's not done properly in the correct order, right. if you don't get married first, then, you know. Think you about, know. Um, I know a couple individuals, and I'm proud to say I know a couple individuals in this wicked society, but that the man and the wife met in high school, dated in high school, married in high school, or right outside of high school, and they're still married together. So they literally only know each other. And if you if you look into those situations, now I'm not saying it's an overall majority, right? Because there's 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 outliers in any situation, right? But the but the majority of people who wait to have Wait, wait for marriage to have sex and then they stay married to that individual their marriage their spiritual state their mental state their physical state is completely different mm -hmm. from somebody who has had you know three four five plus partners each and or has had previous marriages and then come and then getting married and then being together like if you, I, I'm, I'm sure I haven't looked at this, but I'm, I'm just e explaining from experience. If you look at the data, I'm sure if you look at the data for marriages, like the divorce rate in marriages where they wait for marriage to have sex, oh, it's, it's much stay, lower. It's much lower than it is for people who have been either previously married and divorced and married again, or people who have multiple sexual sexual partners prior to getting married at all. Even if it's their first marriage, I guarantee you that the data, it, it, it'll speak for itself because when you save yourself for marriage, 
and you're only sharing your seed from the man's perspective, if you're only sharing your seed with your wife, and you're from the woman's perspective, if you're only receiving from your husband, you guys have bonded on a mind, body, and spirit level, and you mm -hmm. guys are, are truly become one. And it's mm -hmm. even magnified if you are both believers and you're actually adhering to the scripture. So you have an understanding and you're tapping into the knowledge of it all. Because like I said, everything's energy, everything is frequency and vibrations, and there's a reason why. If a mm -hmm. mind, if a thought that comes from the mind can change the physical matter of something, imagine what happens during that intimate moment while you while you're having sex. You guys are vibrating on a whole different crazy level together mm -hmm. with one another. You don't want to be out there doing it multiple times with random people vibrating on that, and then you bring that into the situation to now have sex with your husband or your wife or whoever it is, and now you're vibrating. You're bringing all of those things together. You are now altered. You are now changed. Your DNA structure, your vibrational frequency is different than it started out to be, mm -hmm. and now you're bringing it into the into the into the union. So, now that being said, you know, um, that being said, Messiah can cleanse us all of that. So, you know, if you truly repent, if if you know, never been that way or whatever, and you truly repent. Messiah can cleanse us from that, right? But um, uh, yeah, for for just the world in general, that's that's why you've got all this chaos going on, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you've got all this chaos, and it really stems from uh, from immorality, right? The the um, um, Chuck Missler had had shown a thing one time that was uh, very profound to me. He was talking about the um, that social crises spawn from immorality immorality causes social crises right if everyone was moral and just then there would be no social crises right but um because of immorality it causes social crises and then not to get too political or anything but then governments um they gain power through social crises. Social crises always increase their power, their authority, because then whenever there's a social crisis, they can say, oh, well, we need to take control of this. And everyone's like, yes, please take control of it. So then the governments actually have a, an incentive to promote immorality yep. in order to create more social crises so that they can gain more authority and power. And it continues, it's this continuous cycle of Mm -hmm. immorality being pumped into and injected into society which then causes all of this chaos that we see around us um completely the opposite of what uh what we were instructed in in the torah you know facts facts well family that's all i got <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could probably find more examples in the scriptures, but on short notice, that's all we got to put together. But I hope we 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 drove the point home and we provided enough scriptural example and analogies to answer the question: Is sex actually marriage itself? Now, not saying that you got to agree with us. Absolutely, go back into the scriptures, look for yourself. And see if what we said was true or not. Um, but that is my understanding. And that is also Professor S's understanding. Uh, after all of this has been presented, does anybody have anything they would like to share? Or is has there been any changes in someone's original stance or understanding? Or has somebody's original stance been um, even more fortified? Like, well, I thought this way before. Now I really think that way, even more so after listening to us. What you guys got? This is Tess. I'd just like to say um, thank you for that because now I have a true understanding instead of just what I thought. I know actually what is said in scripture about it. Wow, praises. Mm -hmm. Wow, praises. What about you, Cindy? I feel 
really the same as mom. Um, I was, if I can just be honest, I was feeling extremely bad about myself because my two kids are from two different men. And I just, I was feeling really bad about myself. It wasn't just sleeping with people. It was supposed to be something that was forever. Um, it just, it, it gave me a lot, lot better understanding, a lot better understanding on everything. Understood. Understood. What about you, sis? Well, I was going to say, um, Cindy, uh, if you want to know about that detox, I'm all for it. It'll let you know because it'll make you feel better. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Right. yes, please. I'll send you the information. Absolutely. Uh, sis, send it to me. I'm <laughs> absolutely pleased. I just recently got it, and it, it, it's the truth. Oh, my gosh. You're amazing. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Love you, too. <laughs> okay. So now where we at? Um, the scripture that Joel had brought up about um the lady um that Jesus met at the well with the five husbands. Mm -hmm. Um, I had saw one of my Facebook friends had brought up that scripture, and he was making an argument that sex is marriage because he was saying that um you know basically it's a it's ridiculous to think that she actually made five covenants basically and that it's more likely that she just slept with five men and those were the five husbands that um that Jesus was referring to so I'm glad Joel had brought that up because I, I was going to ask about that. And I think mm. Joel kind of uh, gave me a little clarity on that. I'm still, I'm still questioning it a little bit, but Joel kind of cleared up for me a little bit. Okay. Well, you, 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 you also need to understand that th those, um, those were Samaritans. And um, Samaritans had their own version of the Torah, right? They didn't. Um, and, and that's part of the reason that the Jews hated them so much. Because they were, um, now I won't get into a history lesson about Samaritans at this point, but um, so that was a Samaritan woman, right? So they had a uh, different understanding. They had bits and pieces of the Torah, but they had a lot of their own embellishments. And you know, it was basically a different version of it. And um, so from their understanding, maybe, uh, you know, you could just, at any point, go shack up with a dude and um, get married, and then he can just toss you out or whatever the case is. I don't know. I, I, I doubt that they were um, quite as strict or, you know, whatever the case is. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, someone watching this has probably known someone who's uh, gotten divorced and remarried that many times. Um I mean, it, it it happens. It may not be uh, it may not be super common, but uh, yeah. I mean, it happens. It happens. I I know somebody who got married four times, and I heard about somebody who got married five times, but it was like word of mouth on the five time. But you know, you can't help it um, if like you become a widow. You you know, it's not like you you killed him yourself. If somebody dies. Un that's unfortunate. I'm sure you intended on staying with them for the rest of your life, but they unfortunately passed away, and so you remarried. And you know that's two marriages. When if it was up to you, it would have been one marriage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, some people said I've heard I've heard um, a woman say that they've been married three times, and the first two husbands both passed away, unfortunately. So if you look at it on paper, oh yeah, she's been she's had three husbands, but in reality, you know, her three husbands isn't the equivalent of somebody who got married, divorced, married, divorced, married, mm -hmm. <laughs> married again. It's different. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's a different type of body count, so to speak. Yeah, and so and so you know, we don't know her. We don't know her backstory. Maybe at one point she was. Uh, I mean, you see it in Hollywood all the time. People, people 
divorce and remarry and divorce and remarry and like Hollywood, like everyone is interconnected with everyone over there. You know what I'm saying? Um, literally interconnected yeah, with everybody. Yeah. They're, they're all interconnected with each other. Like they're all, you know, um, so, I mean, you, you can even look at that as an example. I mean, there's plenty of celebrities that have had four or five divorces. Right. So, and then, then they shack up with someone that they're not even married to, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. Um, could I ask a question just really quick, bro? Um, sure. Okay, so I was married once before. I had to literally run from that man for my life and my daughter's life. Uh, if I was to get remarried, that's okay, right? Like, biblically, that would be okay to remarry the fact that I divorced literally because I had to for my life. <laughs> well, if, 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 if the, if, if you've got a, a certificate of divorce, then, then yes. I do. And I'm sorry, after I married him, I found out that um, he was a homosexual. He was bisexual. I had to divorce this man. So I just, I want, I had to make sure. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's, it's, it's sticky because westernized marriage is different from biblical marriage, right? But okay. if all we have to go on is Western, when we come into the biblical understanding, you know, you just got to kind of start at some point, right? Because yeah. um, didn't, didn't the, the, the one we did about um, uh, divorce and remarriage, wasn't that like the second or third Shabbat talk we did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe, I need to rewatch that. Maybe go that. back and watch that because um, because we covered that topic in in depth. Because um, I, is they like, were in the group, Joel, when we did that. that. I don't know if they were in the group when we did that. Yeah, they probably weren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's a def so, yeah, definitely that a the, good one. Marriage and divorce. <laughs> yeah, we tackled okay. tackled two things. We tackled eye for an eye, and then we tackled marriage and divorce. I think in one yeah, because video. because Messiah's words on that get so misconstrued, and they're also improperly translated sometimes. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it'll it'll be translated as divorce when it really says put away. Sometimes it'll be translated as put away when it really says divorce. And you, they're they're two different things. You gotta um, decipher. You know, you have to know. Yeah. Which actually, because you know, putting someone away and and giving them a certificate of divorce are two different things. Yeah. Um. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any way you could send a link for that video? Um, in the yeah. chat. I put it. In uh, thank chat. you so much, bro. Yeah, no that worries. would be perfect. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. You thank you. Out. But like for me, like I said, if you if you got married in the Westernized understanding, like a ma married in America, with within the state, right? You went and got a marriage license and you signed it, whether you had a a ceremony or not. But if, if you're married by the state, um, it's just, it's slightly sticky. You could say, okay, well, I was married in the state or by the state and I was divorced by the state. So I'm going to count that as the foundation for my biblical understanding. So in your case, sis, you were divorced according to the state so if you wanted to take that as your starting point for your biblical understanding, you are free with that bill of divorce to go in and marry again. Um, okay. There's other individuals who are currently married according to the state and they are having issues within that marriage. And now they, they, they have a biblical understanding and they are like almost like on a spiritual level, rejecting that entire union. Like it's null and void. It don't even matter. It don't. It don't count. They have. They're. They're willing to go through the legality of it to get that marriage ended, but from their understanding of like the spirit, they're like, "Yo, that wasn't even my." You know what I'm saying? And so I've heard yeah. it on both sides. I've heard it. If you get married in in America, you marry. Or if you get married in America, it don't count. I've heard both. And there's there's wow. valid there's valid reasonings for both. Um. But it's just, I guess it just depends on the individual because here's, and here's, here's where I, I, I side more so, more so towards, um, 
the the four in regards to the marriage being legit because if you are believers and you get married even though you're getting married according to the state you guys are both no uh you're you guys are both going into the situation knowing that you're making a covenant and that that covenant involves the most high whether it be a religious covenant but it's still a covenant nonetheless that you're aware of so if you come into the true biblical understanding of marriage and what constitute marriage then at that point um you still have to adhere to the previous what was this was what was established previously because you know what it you know what it was now it's different if both of you guys are atheists you don't follow the most high you don't care about the bible you know and you just get married by the state a marriage is just a marriage a marriage is whatever you guys make it but then if you if you come into the truth and you follow the scriptures and you start to adhere in these things then it might look like your previous marriage doesn't have as much validity to it right so it just all depends on the individual. I've heard I've heard it from both sides, but in your case, yeah, there's 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 different circumstances, and um, um, there's 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 valid arguments to and for and all of that. Yeah. Thank you. I just I I'm not gonna just sleep with a man if I'm going to be with a man. It's going to be marriage, and. I'm not going to be with the man unless it can be marriage. And I just, I just needed to make sure. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Jazz, you got anything you want to add? I know you kind of gave when you, when you, um, when you joined in on the, on the dialogue earlier, but do you got anything you want to add after all of this? No, just again, great job to professor S and cousin. You did I say great? <laughs> oh, crazy. <Mom. laughs> and Hubby was listening the whole time. <laughs> All praises. You hey, do he got any thoughts? Anything you want to say since he heard everything tonight? He said, nah, not right now, but he will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, all presence family, thank you guys for being here, everybody on the panel here. And for you guys who's going to watch the recording of this, thank you for watching us and supporting this channel. We've been growing. We've been having more more content. Um, we've been getting more engagement. So thank you guys for that. And uh, continue to support the channel. If you like the content, like, share subscribe and make sure you comment with any of your thoughts below does you know after all of this is sex marriage to you and if so um drop a comment below us and explain why if you have any scriptures you'd like to share with us shoot it to us me and me and professor s will definitely look into it check it out and we'll engage with you you know what i mean we might even uh do another show with a part two to this and bring you on to the show with us and you know you maybe give you give you a chance to kind of explain yourself and your perspective and where you're coming from so um with that being said, love you guys. Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom. Can't wait to see you guys again next week. We shabbat don't know shalom. what we're going to be covering, but <laughs> we'll, we'll have something for you. Shabbat shalom, family. I love you guys. Shabbat shalom. Love you all. Shabbat shalom. I'm good. Talking to the 